You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, and over here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Sevy Mount Twitter the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Undefeated. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anytime we talk, she'd barely respond at all. Never looked me in the eye. Flinched when I moved too quick. She was scared of me. And for a good reason. I looked too much like my dad. So I promised I'd never put her through that again, and I left. I don't know what to say. She's living with a family friend. I send them money for rent and things every month so she doesn't have to work. I'm sorry. Bruce sniffles and wipes his eye. That's the least I could do for her after everything she tried to do for me. He's providing for the only person I've cared for him, and he can never see her again. Maybe it's its own form of penance. Bruce clears his throat. Anyway, I got off on self-defense. Police saw the state of the house and the state of my mom. The scratching all over the walls helped my case, which, hey, point for me, right? His claws scrape against his arm, and it looks like the skin is about to break. I gently place my hand over his, and the scratching stops. Sorry. So, you and your mom survived. How did you get by? I did what I do best, I guess. Oh, that's beautiful art. Damn. All right, all right, everyone. That's another win for the for Rex the Reaper. That's five and one tonight. If you bet against him, you're just plain stupid. But maybe, just maybe, your luck's about to turn around. What? I thought you said I only had. I thought you said I only have to do five tonight. Is there anyone out there that's brave enough to take down the Reaper? Come on, he's all warmed up for you. Just one more. I'll do it. Oh shit, the commissioner. The audience went quiet, all staring at this newcomer. All right, now we're talking. You boys get accustomed while I get you a waiver. The sleazebag announcer strolled off to his office, a dimly lit space sequestered in the corner of the underground room. Uh, Bruce scowled, staring at the old man. Hmm. You got a name? Rex. The two men spoke under their breath. You got a real name? Not one that I can just give out. I suppose I'll have to find it out for myself. I wasn't sure that was supposed to mean. I've been watching you fight for some time now. This place is beneath you. Don't you want more than this? What are you, a recruiter? Nick will kill you if he hears you trying to scalp his boys. Not his boys. Just you. I'm not here for the hell of it. I entered because there's no other way I could have reached you. Well, you might want to rethink that. I ain't exactly allowed to throw fights. Oh, I have no intention of letting you. The old man stripped his tank top off, revealing a powerful toned body underneath. At the very least, consider this an interview. It could prove to be a good opportunity for you. Your name and lights, free room and board, health care. And if I turn it down, then you can spend the rest of your life underground, fighting drunks and licking your wounds. The younger man wiped the cut on his cheek. The last fighter had done some damage and it was still bleeding. Think on it. Bruce's boss returns with some papers and a pen. All right, I got your standard legal papers. You can't be, you can't sue if you die, yada, yada, yada. Just sign here, mister. He takes the pen and scribbles his name down. Harvey. Hmm, that don't sound too scary. I got you covered. All right, fellas, last fight of the night. Grandpa Gray is here to put Rex to bed. <laughs> Bruce and Harvey both glare at the announcer. I got 200 on Grandpa, 50 on Bruce, oh no, 75. The announcer collects the debts while his fighters move to their corners. Bruce feels conflicted. Most fighters down here aren't really in any shape to be fighting. People come here because they have nowhere else to turn. Harvey's right, Bruce is overqualified for a place like this. Finding an illegal fighting ring is hard enough to do, let alone finding one that provides an actual challenge. Bruce is here four, five, sometimes five nights a week, taping his knuckles up and breaking them over some poor sap's jaw. Between that and working out at the gym, he's barely able to make rent on time. At least he has a home, a community. He should be grateful for that. Could find in this dingy, in this dingy, dirty cement prison, hiding his life away from everyone on the surface. He's among his own kind. Big, dumb, violent brutes. That's all he is. That's all he knows. That's all he'll ever be. And now some stranger comes down and offers him an out? It's too much to bear. You boys ready? The two men glanced at the announcer, then went back to staring at each other. Let's get it on! Let's get ready to rumble! 
You fought the commissioner? Yep, a few years back. My first introduction to Fang. I thought he was just a stuffy old piece of shit in a suit. Huh. No, Zan, the man knows how to fight. Does he do it well? Zan, he fucked me up. <clears throat> Raucous cheers erupted from the crowd of men surrounding the ring. They couldn't believe what they had seen. Rex, the undefeated champion, felled in only a few minutes. It wasn't just a victory, it was hardly a fight at all. A landslide, a complete demolition of the man untouched by hundreds before him. Bruce tried to get up, broken, bleeding, and barely breathing. Harvey stood to the side, aiming his icy glare at his opponent, both inviting and threatening Bruce to get up for another round. The crowd's roars wouldn't die down, not while Bruce failed to return to standing. Cries of cheating, rigging the match, stealing their money, drugging the champion. Not that Bruce could hear any of it, his head was pounding. Vision blurred, nose bleeding. No, broken by the looks of it. His ribs too, probably. <sighs> He's choking on his own blood. Nobody bothered to help him after he dropped. Bruce fights for the pain, the daze, the confusion, the misery, and hacks up a load of blood, making sure to breathe through his mouth. His attempt to prop himself up on all fours quick quickly fails quickly, the beast collapsing in his own puddle of blood. The crowd goes wild. Harvey says nothing, simply staring into the crowd as the announcer raises his taped-up fist in the air, basking in his victory. Bruce stops scratching at his arm. It was a wake-up call. I was a big fish in a little pond, knocking heads for scraps and pennies. All while there was a whole other world I couldn't even consider. I mean, Fang's been around for a while. Of course, but come on. You really think some dirt-poor dad-murdering dropout like me could ever hope to amount to shit? I just sort of gave up. I was taking scraps because that's all I deserved. But Harvey? I don't know. He saw something in me. And it was the first time I felt like I'd seen in a long time. I'd been seen in a long time. All those freaks in the crowd. They didn't see me. They saw Rex. They saw a big, stupid, mean monster. Harvey saw I had skill. Potential. So he helped me out. He gave me a place to stay. Free room. Free food. All I had to do was show up and fight people. And I was already good at that, so becoming champ just sort of happened naturally. Shit, no, not. That, that makes me sound like an asshole. I always feel like I never earned it, like I never worked hard enough for it. I was just in the right place at the right time. He looks ashamed. But yeah, that's my story. The commission Harvey pulled me out of a shit life and gave me this new one. A better life. Not even sure if I can call it that anymore, though. It's the same shit, different coat of paint. I'm still trapped underground. I'm still fighting men that don't stand a chance. No offense. None taken. I still make a fraction of what I'm worth. At least a fraction of the money we rake in. All while my boss keeps the rest for the rest of it for himself. Only difference is the legality. Now I don't have to hide who I am. But you still do. I mean, you spent the last few months making a scene whenever we were in the same room. And you always played up that big mean monster persona in our fights. I had to keep up appearances. So you're still hiding who you are. Bro come on, Bruce. That isn't you and you know that. You always talk about how much you hate being a big dumb monster, but that's all anyone knows you as. Because I have to! Oh. He yells the words, and I take a second to breathe. He's not angry or aggressive, just sad. But it's all it's all I have. I can either scare people off or I can pretend I'm pretend I'm not some weird lonely freak who's trying too hard. And I didn't want to look as desperate as I was, so I figured that if everyone was gonna be scared of me no matter what or what I do, I might as well own it, lean into it. At least now I can control how they hate me, and how much they respect me. Heh, <laughs> I guess that's kind of fucked up when I say it out loud, huh? Harv said I needed to be tough. These people are ruthless, dangerous, so I tried to beat them at their own game. When they all look at me like I'm gonna kill them, it felt so right. It felt like I belonged. Bruce is crying. He grips his wrist and squeezes. Looks like it hurts. But I'm so fucking sick and tired of feeling like this. I don't know how to stop. I'm sorry. I had no idea where you're hiding so much. It's better this way. None of these people need to know who I am. Some stupid, broken, gay freak. I mean, shit, I can't even do that part right. What part? He shudders. I have to stop him from clawing up his arm. The gay part. I'm ace, Zan. Oh. Every guy I've tried being with wants something from me. I can never make it happen. They tell me it's all fine. I'll get used to it. Then when I can't, they get pissed and leave, and then I'm alone again. Ace, ace, gray, I think, I think, ace, he may think he means gray ace, okay. Which means mostly asexual, I think? 
yeah, it's periods of asex. As someone who is asexual, but they can't have sex if they want. Hmm. Rinse and repeat. Bruce sighs and puts his face in his hands. Sorry, that was too much. No, it's fine. I'm just tired. I'm tired of feeling like a failure. I let my mom down. I'm letting you down. I'm letting Harvey down. I let Red down. God, did I ever fuck up with Red. I fucked it up bad, Zan. Had so many chances to do it right. He's been the one light at the end of this fucking tunnel, and now... Bruce hunkers over, sobbing. I might not get the chance to tell him I love him. My heart stops beating. He's always tried so hard to know me. He doesn't care that I'm gay. He didn't care that I'm ace. He never thought that kind of guy existed. And he's here. He's been here this whole fucking time right in front of me. I was too busy pretending to be an asshole to protect my stupid fucking ego. He stopped speaking. There's nothing left to say. I sit next to Bruce as he cries. After a few seconds, I pull him against my shoulder. Are we going for the love triangle, y'all? Oh, boy. You and me both. My heart sinks when I say it out loud. Bruce's crying slows to a halt. You? Yeah. I, I love him, too. Bruce is shaking. He clears his throat and wipes his eyes. I gotcha. You guys are pretty close for a while, so I guess it makes sense. I'll back off him if... When he pulls through. No, that's not what I meant. Bruce shakes his head. It's fine. After all the shit I let slide, he deserves someone better. Damn it, no, that's not... He growls and clenches his fists. What I'm trying to say is that he deserves someone that can treat him right. You said it yourself earlier. I haven't exactly been the best friend to him. Bruce's claw, claw traces my hand and rests over it. I think he was trying to scratch himself up again. Me either. We should do something nice for him. Maybe get him something nice, like a water bottle. He lets out a soft chuckle between sniffles. He's crazy about those things. I don't think we'd have to try very hard to make him happy. All the more reason to really do something nice. Make up for lost time. Make up for everything. I don't think there's anything we can do to make this better. But we have to do something. We have to make sure this doesn't ever happen again. How would we do that? Talking to Harvey would be the first step, but he's out for a week. Just in time for our fight. He sighs. Yeah, that too. I, uh... Bruce takes in a breath and lets it out. His hand reaches to mine, and he cuffs my, and he cuffs my wrist. It's firm, but he's not hurting me. I watch as Bruce looks around his room, then looks at the ceiling, closing his eyes. His thumb caresses my wrist. It's slow. Tender. Scared. Okay. I know what we can do. You, you sh strangled him. I did. I'm fine, Drayden. You... Bruce and I are seated in Drayden's office. I spent the night in Bruce's apartment. It was late, and we both agreed we didn't want to be alone after watching what happened to Redline. I know it sounds... I lost control, Drayden. I don't have an excuse for what I did. I acted out after emotions ran high, and I heard Xander. Okay. And I'm telling you this to own up for my actions. You need to run any tests or scans on him, make sure his throat's all normal. Drayden makes an annoyed sound. Ideally, we would have done that last night, immediately after you strangled Xander. Drayden. So, waiting half a day before coming to me was not just irresponsible, but incredibly dangerous. Right. I'll be writing this up and reporting you to the commissioner. Understood. Though he is out of town for a week. That... Damn it, fine, whatever. Are you okay, Xander? I was shaken up, but I feel fine now. It stung for a little bit after, I guess, but he didn't really strangle me for long. Drayden holds his temple with his fingers. That doesn't make any better, Xander. Bruce! Yeah? I'm signing up for mandatory anger management courses. Thank you. I don't ever want something like this to happen again. Drayden stops writing for a second, then continues writing. Could I, uh, get some therapy sessions, too? I know it won't fix everything, but it seemed to help Xan and Red, so... Oh. Of course, Bruce. I'll be happy to schedule you some sessions. All right, y'all. I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silver, and thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold-tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to your ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not-safe-for-work contents as little as $5. All righty. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye